So hello and welcome. My name is Marcus Katz and today I will be unboxing the Venetian Tarot by Eugene Vinitsky. Um, no props, no books, just me and a tarot deck. So Venice is one of the world's most renowned cities built on a lagoon um, over a thousand years. It's been there, one of the most romantic cities in the world one of the most structurally interesting places to visit. Uh, I've been there a couple of times, both times in beautiful company, and it certainly has a place in my heart. And it's surprising that people haven't really used it as a source of tarot before, because obviously tarot originated in Italy. And just as a side note, I'd recommend, um, if you're interested in the history of Venice, the series that was on the BBC in 2004 and was called Francesco's Venice um, and is now available um, probably fairly cheaply on a DVD. I don't know if that's available in the States, but certainly it's a fascinating series and gives you a lot of the history and the background of Venice by someone whose family has been living in the lagoon for a thousand years. It's a remarkable place and I'm looking forward to um, taking a look at the deck and see how that captures the spirit of the place. I believe Eugene lives in Geneva, another um, beautiful um, location on the planet, so it'll be interesting to see how that location also informs the deck. So this is entirely raw, as they say, unplugged. Um, um, I'm just going to open the box and see what strikes me about it. I waited maybe about a month since the deck was um, sent to us because I wanted to allow time to actually do this um, properly so I could enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy the unboxing as well and it inspires you to maybe um, go and um, buy the deck and explore it. Let's see. So it's um, a nice solid um, box. It's, um, uh, it opens like so. And it's gorgeous on the inside. The patterning is uh, sort of Renaissance um, Venetian. Um, the book we'll take a look at in a second is um, perfectly slotted into the top of it. So it's beautifully designed. And I take the cards out like so. Um, the box has a wonderful stamp on the bottom of it. And what does it say on the back? Um, 22 major and 56 minor arcana deck created by Swiss artist Eugene Vinitsky. Um, and it talks about the masks of Venice and um, has its location Geneva, Switzerland. So let's um, take these out of the little slider here. There we go. And you'll notice as well that these are gilt. They are gilt edged, so that's a gorgeous touch to them. It's very difficult to get that right, and this is looks absolutely perfect. In fact, that way they look like a solid block of gold. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Um, the cards are um, fairly, fairly thick. I, I don't get too het up about card thickness, but these, um, um, these seem fairly thick. And uh, on immediate, in fact, they remind me of one of my favorite decks, um, the Tarot Obscura, um, which was a limited edition deck published by um, Adam McLean and has 22 major arcana and was sort of almost photographic in style, um, but very detailed. So here we have the sun. Now, um, the interesting thing is obviously the um, um, landmarks of Venice are in the background. The mask is very prominent in this and um, he's holding a, a triangle here. So one of the things I like to do is um, with a new deck is I'm not afraid to look in the little white book and find out what the symbolism uh, means if I don't understand it. So here it says, so there's a little bit in the book about the sun, a little black and white illustration that says, um, a shining cavalier wearing a costume and mask of the sun is holding a solar banner and a pyramid with the all-seeing eye. 
beaming the sun high in the sky is illuminating the bell tower in St. Mark's Square that you're going to see clearly in the background and clearly the sun is there. Um, the Sun Arcanum embodies the visions of what the greatest triumph and glory, joy and happiness, wealth and prosperity, health and rave of stamina, rave of stamina look like. It incorporates all of the most life-affirming things. Everything keeps glittering and rejoicing, all things are successful, dreams come true. Brings clarity, conciliation, self-assurance and confidence in tomorrow's potential. It only remains for us to remember that the sun can cause burns when it is too close. Its absence brings dismal mood and apathy. So there's a nice use of language there. There's a lot of um, key phrases and descriptions of the card. Um, not too much about the history in detail, um, but obviously this is just a little white book rather than a exploration of the whole history of Venice. Um, so it also has the meaning and also the reverse meaning. So reversed, it means a deceleration in growth, health problems, delays in activities, self-admiration. It's the card of the uh, selfie taker upside down. Um, individualism, vanity, pretense and complicated relations. So um, an interesting card to get, both upright and reversed. Okay, so um, that's one of the major arcana. We can see that they're clearly numbered up, up the top and have a label down at the bottom. Um, they do have borders around them, but the borders are very stylish, um, black, simple black with a gold um, border. And the reverse is reversible and very Venetian. So let's take a look at the next card. Well, let's take a look at the couple in contrast. And seeing that these two cards are quite dark, so it's a little bit difficult to see um, some of the detail in the dark parts of them. But the uh, lighter parts of them really do stand out. So here we have the tower, and um, forgive me for the reflection from the screen here, and temperance. So you can see that they are quite glossy as I reflect them on the screen there. So um, temperance, um, oops, temperance here. Um, again, wearing a Venetian mask, there are lots of um, different styles of mask, and in fact the mask makers of Venice have their own guild and history um, of mask making. And so here we can see with the tower, I'll wait for the camera to um, catch up focus of that there, um, that we can see that that's the um, famous tower in St. Mark's. Um, and possibly the people are being blasted out of it because they've realized just how expensive it is to go up to the top of it. And um, that um, embodies the shock of the tower. It's the shock of what a trip to Venice will do to your actual wallet. So um, those two cards are really beautiful, really gorgeous. Um, of the world. Um, it's nice when a card just makes you smile just um, immediately when you look at it. Um, that is so um, light, ethereal, and gorgeous, and the colours, um, particularly in um, contrast to the tower, you can immediately see the um, contrast of, of colours here. So that is um, really, got a really nice light touch to it, um, and in fact she's holding her mask, um, which looks like a sort of lion's mask. Um, above her head, which um, gives a sort of nakedness to the figure without the figure actually being naked. So that's a really interesting um, uh, design choice. Um, what else have we got? So we've got all of the twos here. <clears throat> so they are in this deck. Um, oh, I just must um, um, show you the three. In fact, all of the threes. These are they're really gorgeous cards. Um, look at this because. I mean, we know from our research um, in Pamela Coleman Smith's work. So here we have the three of wands, um, and we can see the three ships. And um, this is just looking out from the square, St. Mark Square, with the um, um, winged lion of Venice up on the top of the pillar there, and the ship setting the sail. This is an ideal location for that. With our research into Pamela Coleman Smith, 
realizing that a lot of the cards were designed in Winchelsea um, and Tenterden, where she was staying at the time. Winchelsea was one of the Sangpois, which are the five ports that were based around shipbuilding. Um, so Pamela actually drew in, um, you can see in the Ten of Pentacles, for example, the flag of Winchelsea with the ships on it. Um, there's a sort of castellated ship um, that is the seal and flag, the banner of Winchelsea. And hence it explains why the um, shipbuilders are on the two and three of wands, because that was a nod to Winchelsea and then building the ships. So Venice is a major port and a trading port, um, is the ideal location to still incorporate um, that touch from that design touch from Pamela Coleman Smith. But it also has these um, uh, figures that are very immediately um, recognizable as Venetian Renaissance styled in their costumes. And the detail of the costuming is gorgeous. So if we um, just get that out slightly out of the glare there. Um, Actually, on the table in front of me, they are not glaring or reflecting at all. It's just because they're very close to a bright lit screen um, to give that reflection. But we can see the um, level of detail in the foreground, um, picking up the figure, and the blending of the background really gives a um, 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 prominence to the figure. And this is an interesting design touch, actually, because... Um, I was thinking with the three of ones there that um, it seemed to be perhaps a little unclear. I had to double check whether it was the ones, but now I come to look at the cards, you can see at the bottom of each card there's a nice banner with the symbol of the pentacles, the swords, the cups, and the ones down at the bottom of each card. So you can immediately see this is the two of pentacles. The Two of Swords, the Two of Cups, and the Two of Wands. If we take the Two of Wands here, we can again see a merchant with the um, Plague Mask um, with the Two of Wands there. And I think they are, are they colour-coded as well? Yeah, they're colour-coded as well, so it's a really nice little design touches built into the cards, which would be great for beginners because um, it's not evident to your sitter immediately that that is the three of cups, whereas you can see it immediately just by putting those two together. It's not like it needs a big banner under the bottom, say three of cups. That's a really nice touch. So um, what else do we have? We have um, the, um, um, huh, the four of swords. So this is possibly in the famous prison that you can go and see, um, just off St. Mark's Square. Um, here's a guard sat outside the prison. Um, so that carries across that idea of um, um, restraint and uh, retreat um, that the Four of Swords can sometimes carry. Obviously in Pamela Colin Smith's version, it has the word Pax hidden in the stained glass window. So there is a sort of peaceful resolution there um, in a prison. Oh, and immediately recognizable Venetian um, symbols, these poles built into the, um, um, the clay that uh, sits under the lagoon in order to build the city on um, for our eight of um, um, wands here. So, so that's, and it's got a nice sense of movement. You can actually see that the movement is from the gondola rather than from the poles themselves, which have sort of landed in this particular card. With it being Venice, obviously the sea and the water is pretty close by at all times and getting closer um, every day, of course. So here we have the Eight of Cups and we can see the, um, you know, the presence of the water, even in the clouds themselves. Um, the pentacles um, seem to be set more indoors. It'll be interesting to see how Eugene has um, uh, developed that symbolism for um, the water perhaps being in the cups. And certainly Gone for the Wands is an obvious go for the um, um, uh, gondola poles and so forth um, within the city. I quite like the lamp here as well. It's a, Nice illuminating touch to the nine of wands. Nine of wands. 
So, um, and the figures are absolutely beautiful. They're all very rich and opulent. So we can see here the Lady in the Nine of Cups um, with her fan and mask. There's a nice touch of the um, butterfly that's just up here. It gives a sort of trick of the eye effect and gives um, a dimension to the picture itself. And um, I love the opulent tapestry here as well. I don't know how many times I've used the word opulent in, in this um, unboxing, but oh my gosh, there are some beautiful cards with images. Um, um, this card here, the Nine of Swords, take a look at that. You see the figure sort of underneath the shadows of the swords. So in terms of reading, I always read this card as concerns without point, an endless point. Wait called this card... Um, the description of the lady in it, someone whose pain or sorrow is like no other. And we discovered that Pamela had um, painted a picture of Ellen Terry as Juliet um, in that picture, hence the Cain and Abel picture that's on the bottom of the um, slab on which Juliet awaits, because her actual quote is something like, um, I would sooner my head be bashed out by my kinsman's bone than discover this terrible thing that's happened to uh, Romeo. And um, sure enough, Pamela's painted Cain and Abel bashing each other with, with the bone um, down below, because that's exactly the quote in that scene. So I could read this card very easily, transposing that meaning, because the swords are actual shadows. So the concerns and the worries that are afflicting the person are a malady. They're, they're in their own head, um, and um, the situation has already arisen. It's interesting as well that there's a, a nice background um, image there. I don't know if you can see the, um, the intricate detail behind the shadows that looks something like the Last Supper or a resurrection scene. So it would be interesting to find in the book if there's anything for that. Um, so that would be the Nine of Swords. So we take a look at the Nine of Swords and we'll see if there are any reading methods in the book as well. Um, um, uh, yeah, so for this person, a nightmare has turned into something real. Even window grates look like crushing with swords to him. So it's nice because the window grates have been turned into crushing with swords. Um, can reality be distorted by the mask he's trying to take off? So there's no particular description of what that background scene is, leaving it up to us to um, either research a little bit more or make our own interpretation of it. There are three... Um, um, spreads at the beginning, and actually there's a nice little history of Venice just in um, the first four or five pages of the Little White Book here. And there's a couple of um, the tarot spreads, a three-card spread here, a horseshoe spread, um, the Celtic cross. Um, um, good, it just says the Celtic cross is probably the oldest and most popular spread for reading the tarot. Um, it has survived so long because the layout of the cards is simple and powerful. So again, there's no misinformation in that, which is really nice to see. Um, it doesn't say this was used by the ancient Celts um, or has been in use for 500 years, which is, um, thank you, Eugene, for not continuing on some of the misinformation about the Celtic cross. Um, so we can see here with the Ten of Wands, instead of carrying the Ten Wands, this Masked figures carrying an awful lot of masks in a basket. On these gorgeous cards, and the colours are absolutely stunning. Um, and again, the colour and the background, and the attention to detail and the perspective, and the scope of difference between the minor figures, literally in the minor cards, and the background is beautiful. It gives a very magical. Um, sense to the place. So the figures here are almost secondary to the environment in which they are um, uh, moving, living and breathing. So it really brings the sense of place to the reading itself. And um, we'll, we'll try reading um, in a second. Um, interestingly enough, the ace here is far more um, almost symbolic in nature. It's not so much of a um, um, 
uh, scenic, although, you know, one would guess, I mean, that's not an actual representation of something that actually happened. But um, here it seems more symbolic. The um, symbols seem um, um, far more um, clear cut and distinct from each other um, than some of the other cards. Okay, um, let's just quickly take a look at some of the court cards. Um, so we've got the king, um, let's find the king and a queen. Um, let's see how they um, match each other. Um, so here we have the queen of wands. Um, very beautiful, and the King of Pentacles. Um, very clearly um, an Emperor, King of Pentacles type. So there's no mistaking. And again, we've got the same use of the banner for the emblems down below. <laughs> so um, um, some people like to see the death card in a deck in case it freaks out their clients or is suitable. So here's the death card. That's suitably mysterious, it's sort of inviting in a way, <clears throat> in that death is just another journey. So that's um, an interesting uh, take on death. And a lot of people like the star card and the high priestess. So let's find um, those cards. Um, the Hierophant is perhaps suitably enough for Venetian history. Um, maybe a picture of the Pope there. Um, and the Doge of Venice had um, an almost separate power base, um, even though um, religious constraints did apply. Um, uh, Venice was literally a law unto itself for a long time, so it's a nice, um, less, um, um, what's the word? Um, there's a sort of nod to the um, dress up nature of authority um, within the Hierophant card itself. Um, Justice is interesting because it uses the famous um, Bridge of Sighs, um, that um, where prisoners were taken from the court to the prison, um, which is a very famous location in Venice. So that's um, a, a very clear image of um, justice. Right, let's see if we can find the High Priestess. So here's the High Priestess, a sort of, and the Star card, which are sort of totem cards um, for tarot readers themselves. Um, perhaps because we use our intuition to bring hope, which is the two meanings of these two cards. And so we can see those two cards are, um, again, suitably um, mysterious and beautiful. We've also got the um, moon uh, symbolism and the two pillars have been neatly transposed to two gondola poles, uh, mooring poles as well. So very easy use of the symbols. Um, uh, some themed decks tend to be very um, forced in the um, utilization of the symbology, um, but this deck seems to have done it very easily. Um, and I'm loving the um, fact that um, uh, masks themselves are so intrinsic to the symbolism of a tarot reading in um, getting through someone's personality to find out what's really going on underneath the mask of their actions, behavior, thinking, symbolism, um, sorry, um, behavior and so forth. Um, and the fact that Venice is based on the uh, lagoon itself, so there's a lot of shipbuilding and transportation um, and celebratory uh, symbolism built into the nature of the place itself. So it's um, uh, a beautiful idea and concept and it's been beautifully executed. So I'm just going to do a quick um, three card reading um, and I'll keep shuffling the deck for a moment um, and I'm going to do it for a real question so um, um, uh, okay, so um, I'm going to do it for a personal question, um, if you'll indulge me, rather than do it for um, uh, a made-up thing. And um, uh, my question is um, uh, about a current situation, whether that is going to, um, the, the best way of working it out, um, the best way of 
um, actually acting in the next three months in order to get the best out of um, uh, a particular situation. So first card I'm going to draw is for the past. We'll do a simple past, present, and future. In fact, let's let's take a look at Eugene's book and see what his three card reading is. Um, um, but yeah, past, present, and future. Past events um, and the possible outcome is the third card. So let's take a look at that. The first card for the past is the Three of Pentacles. So the Three of Pentacles. So we can see the three stars shining in. So let's take a look at Eugene's book to actually see what that would tell us if we were an absolute beginner um, in reading the cards. Um, and we had to look it up. It is night. A craftsman is tirelessly working at a gondola making workshop. He's fulfilling a commission and referring to some drawings. Three stars are lighting his workshop, symbolizing the three components of success. This is interesting. Discipline, planning, and industriousness. Is the overwork going to prevent the hard worker from completing his project in time? The meaning is hard work, expertise, starting a business, construction, and profit. So indeed, that does refer very interestingly to the situation that I'm asking about. So in the past, there was um, hard work, starting a business, construction, and profit. Um, and I particularly like the idea that this throws in of discipline, planning, and hard work. Discipline, planning, and hard work. But that's in the past. So let's see how the present situation has um, trans transpired. So transposed there for some reason. So we're thinking about the transposition of uh, real world um, um, locations and environments to symbolism, then to be interpreting those real world things as symbols, interpreting them into another situation that's happening in real time um, that is not happening in Venice in the Renaissance. And that's a transposition of meaning from one entire um, um, situation to another, which is what the tarot does. It's like a key between um, um, a real world transposed into symbols, transposed back into the real world, and that's what the um, key symbolism of the tarot is all about. So let's. Um, and there, there are many tools to actually do that with. Um, you know, other forms of divination don't really do that because you are. Um, you know, viewing images in a in a bowl or something like that, for example. Um, I guess I Ching is similar, maybe runes as well, but um, tarot is certainly preeminent in that because they are illustrated images. Oh, and we're back to the um, three of pentacles is still at the bottom there. So, one more shuffle. So the present moment here is now represented by... <laughs> <coughs> Interesting. The five of pentacles. The five pentacles. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Usually, when I'm reading with a new deck with new symbols, um, compared to say the Waitsmith or the Thoth, um, I try to avoid. I used to try and think what was the Waitsmith card. In fact, once I did a gallery reading and I had a picture of the Waitsmith cards in front of me, in order to remind myself sometimes of the obscure symbolism in the deck I was demonstrating from the artists, which was very abstract. And I kept going back to the um, uh, Wade Smith images to remind myself what the card was all about. And after a few readings like that, I realized that actually you just look at the deck itself and read fresh from the deck, and it will give you new insight back onto the other decks that you've been using instead of trying to force it into... Um, um, your existing framework. In fact, there's um, a famous quote about the mysteries. Um, the mind must be enlarged to understand the mysteries, not the mysteries made small to fit into the mind. And I think that's the same when you get a new tarot deck, that you should expand your mind around the new symbols rather than try and force it into the symbols that you already know. So here we have the Five of Pentacles, um, and we have three figures marching along and um, they seem um, um, that they are leaning on their poles um, one may be blind um, and the first character has a bell which is only shown very small on the Pamacom Smith image 
um, because it's around somebody's neck. And Wade describes them as mendicants in that particular deck. Uh, mendicants being people who have chosen their poverty as a spiritual way of life. So let's see what Eugene has to say about the Five of Pentacles and whether he's taken up that sort of meaning. So we've gone from the Three of Pentacles in the past to the Five of Pentacles in the present. So some blind beggars are dragging themselves along the square and past the palace. They are holding firmly onto each other. A bell in the leader's hand announces their coming. Will it help them get help or find a way, way to shelter? And the meaning is limitations, losses, failures, financial disaster, concerns, worries, hard times and diseases. Um, so again, we could see that as a um, very obvious reading going all the way from the Three of Pentacles, start of a business, to the Five of Pentacles, financial disaster. I should point out that that is not a um, um, specific reading of the current situation. It's not entirely a financial disaster, but there have been strange financial constraints um, placed on the business that I'm asking about because of a certain hurricane um, a year and a little bit ago, which um, um, entirely dented progress from the wonderful three all the way to the five. But of course, that's, that's progress in any business as you move from one phase into another. So what do we do about it? Now, this is where the cards really have to prove their metal. Um, because when you do a reading like this for somebody and you say, well, I can see the situation has gone from this situation to another, and that's why you're having a reading, because it's a challenging situation, they really want to know what to do. What are you going to do about it? Um, what advice can the cards give that is not only relevant, but also useful and also applicable, something that you can actually manage to do? Um, some some decks tend to be too abstract, and they tell you you know to I don't know focus on your higher self or something, and they really don't bring it down to a sort of practical level. Um, that then is up to the reader, and then you get into the danger of giving some you know half-assed um, financial advice, practical advice, even God for, you know forbid health advice. Um, out of one's own head when in fact it should be coming straight from the cards. If the cards can't carry that symbolism and that interpretation, you have to push it into something, then you're far more at risk at um, um, giving just advice out of your own head than actually reading the card itself. So um, a deck designer has to be very mindful. Um, it's not a, um easy task to design a tarot deck that is useful um, as a tool because it's not just art, it is also a tool. So let's um, shuffle around and see what the advice for the future position is. We're at the halfway mark, um, sorry, the half an hour mark of this reading, of this video, so thank you for sticking with me if you've stuck this far. It's a gorgeous deck. Um, uh, I knew I'd like it, um, but I didn't know how much I'd like it, but I like it a lot. So, um, and I will definitely be reading with it. So here we go. Right, okay. Um, do we think I've shuffled enough? It's hard to tell sometimes, isn't it? You know, um, the beginners ask this question a lot. They say, how will I know when it's right to lay the cards out? Sometimes what I do is I imagine that um, another hand is holding the cards and sort of shifting them around for me. And there, it just bent that one slightly for me, so I know I've finished. Sometimes I feel like it's just sorting them out a little bit for me, um, and I have to wait for it to finish. So, the future position, the advice card, is the two. is the two of swords, which is this lady in between these two figures here. So, again... A good way of reading for yourself is with a brand new deck because and going straight from the booklet because then it gives you advice, cold advice, straight out of the um, book that's a little bit more difficult to reinterpret inside your own head. Oh, and the book has um, 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 at the back um, other tarot decks um, by Eugene. There's a money tarot deck and the world in colors tarot deck. It looks an entirely different sort of design, which is interesting. And a little bit about the um, um, artist um, at the back. 
and it's Eugene there. Um, thank you for producing such a wonderful deck, Eugene. Um, it's really a gorgeous piece of work. So, uh, where were we? Two of Swords? Um, two of Swords. Um, right, um, some people are having an argument in the street. They are dressed as Commedia del Art characters. Um, um, their rivals, the ladies raised up hands, seem to appeal to reason. Um, so, interesting. So the meaning of the card then is friendship, passion, concord, and alliance. Submission, agreement, rigorous reflections. So the um, solution to the situation is to um, uh, make an alliance and perhaps even submit a little bit um, in the context of the question is to do with delegation, I feel, um, and to make more accords and agreements with other people, perhaps partners within the um, workspace itself, and to have some rigorous reflections, some reviews and tidying up of existing projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this card out for a couple of days um, uh, unless I decide to use the rest of the deck for readings in the next two days and just contemplate it as offering a solution to the situation. And because I've got to make some decisions anyway over the next few days, I will refer to this card before I make the decision to see if it resonates with it and see if the card sort of um, like a tuning fork agrees and resonates with the decision or whether it feels um, that I need to change the decision to accord more with the energy of the card itself. So again, um, I've been doing an out of the box with the Venetian Tarot by Eugene um, uh, Vinitsky. And um, it is a absolutely gorgeous deck that I thought I love, and I do indeed love it. So straight out of the box, um, I really, really feel um, very passionate about this um, opulent deck. And um, the images are already, I can see these on a reading table or sending to somebody. Um, you get the immediate feeling of setting off there the Eight of Cups into a new horizon. So it's a beautiful deck. I'd highly recommend um, tarot lovers, art lovers, tarot readers themselves um, grab a hold of a copy. Um, I don't even necessarily endorse decks or anything. Um, you, um, um, tarot is a very subjective thing. The decks people rave about that I just don't get, and the decks that I love and I show people and they go meh. So. Um, um, but for me, this deck is really gorgeous. Um, thank you again, Eugene, for um, producing it. Um, it's um, a very difficult job to um, pull off a tarot deck that um, um, is going to be useful and stands the test of time and is artistic. And it's not just a... Um, um, what's the word? A sort of fad or something that's a bit of a novelty item. Um, that doesn't have long-standing value, and I think this deck will indeed um, have long-standing value. So thanks a lot everyone for watching this. We'll be doing um, more out-of-the-deck, um, out-of-the-box reviews of decks um, as we produce the Arcartia site. Uh, we're doing a lot of work on Arcartia at the moment, writing a lot of original material for it that will teach Tara in a very deep experiential way that has never been seen before. We're having to come up with new ways of teaching tarot um, for an entirely new generation of readers and also a slightly um, um, existing uh, generation of readers that want a new way of really exploring tarot that they haven't experienced before. And we're doing that on Arcartia. So if you do want to pop around to that site, it's www.arcartia, A-R-K, a-R-T-I-A dot com and um, uh, join us there. We're launching February the 2nd, 2018, which may seem a little while away, but it's not that long away now. Um, and you find out all of the details on that site. So thanks a lot again for watching. Um, if you're interested in learning about the tarot, then join the Tarot Association at www.tarotassociation.com. We have um, 10 hours worth of training videos, even for starters, um, 13 magazines and all sorts of goodies there waiting for you to take your tarot to new levels 
right from the word go. So thanks a lot again, thanks a lot Eugene, and um, look forward to seeing you all again.